<laughs> Fiends. So, you've fallen down the Danzig Well. You got bit by the, by the Crimson Ghost. And uh, one night you find yourself, you know, covered in fake blood, woeing at the moon. You've discovered horror punk. Or possibly, you know, you, uh, you know, you got trampled at a Rob Zombie concert. And, you know, that was your entrance. Or possibly the Damned, or the Cramps, or uh, the Murder Dolls. You know, but either way, you have discovered there's a whole world of horror-influenced music out there. So, now what? What are the other bands? So let's take a look. A, a primer, if you will, of, you know, your day one bands into the genre. So... We're gonna start... So let, let, let's start just... I, I pulled some CDs out and I have a few other examples of CDs I don't have. Uh, of, you know, just... You search Amazon, you search Google, and you're gonna come up with these bands when it comes to horror punk. You know, a, a lot of us who have been around take a lot of these bands for granted. And I'm not talking the niche bands. I'm not talking about the stuff that we hold dear that are you must listen to but you know you kind of got to dig to find them now i'm talking about the ones that had shirts at hot topic had uh you know they've done some big national tours some of them have toured the world maybe they've got a huge following in europe and maybe only sell out 300 people in a bar over here but either way these are bands that you will find quickly when you start looking for horror inspired music and we'll start with one of my near and dear to my heart bands, and near and dear to a lot of people's hearts, Bloodskid, which I'm not even sure if you can see that, five sellers below, and subsequently Argyle Goolsby. Since Goolsby's kept that, that horror alive while TB's taking a break and working on his own stuff, uh, which is equally as good, just not overly horror inspired. You know, Blitz Kid, definitely a day one band. Definitely high quality, no real fumbles in the material. A, a band you should definitely check out. Granted, broken up in 2012, but Goolsby is keeping that horror business alive. Alive and well, and doing a knockout job of it. So, <clears throat> speaking of touring bands that Goolsby at one point had something to do with, Doyle, who's on tour right now. Um, and, I mean, this is all kinds of horror punk cred right here. I mean, Alex Story from Cancer Slug singing, and, uh, you know, Doyle from The Misfits. Uh, yeah, definitely a, a, a band to check out. And, that, and, you know, you dig into Doyle, you find Cancer Slug, you find Cancer Slug, you have gone down the well. You know? Um... This is still a little bit of, you know, kneeling at the altar of Uncle Glenn, but definitely a good one to check out and will lead you in other directions. And uh, speaking of other directions, but definitely in that just straight up horror punk vein and a day one band for sure, Calibreeze. Man, Calibreeze. Just good dudes, good tunes, um, I love these guys. I've loved these guys since I their first EP. I mean, consistently good music. Um, definitely, uh, I'm I'm glad they've progressed out of what they were. Um, I I love what they were, and I like where they're going. Definitely a band to check out. Will get you on the right path. Um, definitely get you know it. One thing I got to point out about any of these bands I talk to, when you discover that band, look to the bands from the general area. If you can somehow find people in their scene that can point you at other bands, 
That is the best way to really, I mean, the, the, that's day two, day three, day four, deep diving of, you know, really, really kick-ass stuff. Because, you know, meeting people and going down the well, that is the best way to uh, discover a lot of these bands. Um, I mean, I got in on the ground floor. A lot of these, a lot of these bigger groups are now the old, the old guard. And the back, I have to remind myself of that all the time. Um, I wake up every day hoping I find something new that blows my socks off. Uh, because, you know, in my early 20s, this was what we had. And it was, I mean, it was killer. So, Calabrese, Arizona. They, they've got a, a few, a, a small little scene. I, I haven't dug too deep into it, but I mean, Zombies is from down there. But yeah, Calabrese, day one band. You will definitely find them, check them out. I mean, Calabrese has their merch game strong, and you can find everything. And uh, I know they're going back into the studio soon, so there's going to be more stuff coming. Uh, and uh, when it comes to way bigger bands uh, that are not necessarily horror punk now, uh, AFI comes to mind. And I'm talking mid era because, boy, that the, the AFI is one of those bands that has definitely evolved a lot over the years. I mean, they were like really, really scrappy, skatey, hardcore for their first couple albums. And then they went, they started going down that horror, hardcore kind of vein. And by the time they got to Lost Sales, I mean, the horror punk era. And I know all, a lot of us in the scene back in the day adored AFI. We just considered them one of our own. Um, the All Hallows EP, this right here, being probably the pinnacle of that era, but this, The Art of Drowning, Black Sails in the Sunset. I mean, that era right there is phenomenal. Uh, and definitely stands up to everything we will talk about. Um, but they're, they're a good day one band. Uh, especially this era of them. And then, uh, you know, some CDs I don't have, but I definitely check out. Um, Balzac. Uh, they did a split with uh, Jerry Only as the Misfits uh, ages ago. Uh, it probably would have been 15 some years ago. It was right, right around the time Doyle and Graves left. Uh, they did a split with Day of the Earth Caught Fire. And that was a big in. And they are just, they're Japanese. They're horror punk to the, just, to the core. That is what they do. Um, they've evolved their sound. I'm not a huge Balzac fan. Uh, the vocals don't grip me, but I know a lot of people who do love that band. And they are definitely one to be checking out. Um, of course, speaking of the Misfits, Michael Graves. Uh, Gravy is... I'm not a huge Graves fan. Yes, I know. Bring the hate. I don't really give a shit. Um, I, it's just not my cup of tea. Um, I love the guys in his, in his band, all of them, pre, uh, previous members and current members. Uh, great dudes, all of them. Uh, his music is just not my cup of tea. But he is big. He's, uh, he's definitely a, you know, one of those artists you can get into. And then you know he had JV in the band for a long time from Darrow Chemical Company. And Mr. Monster, so that takes you down that path. And now he's got Goolsby playing bass for him. That takes you down that whole path. Um, you know, Loki is the guitar player of that band who is also in Spy Society 99. And if I remember, he might, he very well might have been, well, I know he uh, tooled around with Mike Hideous for a long, long time, Mike Hideous being in Spy Society 99, but I'm not sure if he played on any of the um, like hideous material previously, but I digress. I just, you know, when the guys are pulling from the horror punk scene, one big day one artist can lead you down many paths if you're interested. So that is another one to check out. Um, Wednesday 13, who 
is phenomenal at what he does, has a huge following. Personally, I think his his vocals sound kind of like putting a bum into a, a, a yard chipper, a wood chipper. Not my thing. Um, I didn't like Frankenstein Drag Queens. I'm not really a big Murder Dolls fan, and um, I don't really like Wednesday 13. That's me. But you, check him out. I know there are a ton of people who love that cock rock fucking vibe that he mixed in with the Murder Dolls, so you get this like fucking schlocky horror punk thing mixed with that cock rocky arena thing going on and just squishes together and you get this sleazy fucking horror thing that Wednesday 13 has just perfected over the years um yeah so that is definitely one to be checking out uh and of course Germany I'm coming at you I am coming at you the two big ones from Germany that are definitely day one bands, the Crimson Ghosts, uh, these guys just rip it. They bring that heavy, faster uh, horror punk vibe. Just really good stuff. Um, phenomenal vocals. I mean, everything you'd want out of a horror punk band to really get into and sink your teeth into. Can't wait to hear the new record. Um, yeah, Crimson Ghosts, and I would never have found out about the Crimson Ghosts if the other wouldn't have started uh, Fiend Force Records, and the other, who really aren't all that horror punky these days, uh, new albums definitely more than the last, oh, well, all the albums on SPV Records, uh, Steam Hammer, the other, good stuff, um, not my favorite in the scene. I like him. I enjoy the shit out of him. Definitely one to be checking out. Uh, but the German sounds definitely, uh, that'll take you down a whole other well. I mean, as soon as you find that, you find the spook, you find the fright, you find just a plethora of other weird and really cool bands, uh, both new and old. They've got a, a thriving scene. And because of the German scene, there are, well, okay, we have a lot of bands over here, and I, I really think that the European scene and the UK, Europe, I don't, I don't, I, like, I think they take for granted, that. It re, like, it's big, it's a lot bigger in Europe, a lot bigger. In the States, yeah, we have a lot of bands, but it is a tiny-ass scene. Um, I know I, I've, I've stated this in previous videos, but, I mean, even Goolsby, I mean, when he tours, I mean, he's, he's playing tiny-ass bars in the States. Maybe, maybe he plays bigger venues in, say, L.A., New York, but, I mean, any other place, especially Midwest, um, you know, Florida... Just wherever, except for maybe the huge, huge cities, L.A., New York, Chicago, possibly Cleveland, though he usually plays Cincinnati instead because that's where Cincinnati is home. <laughs> um, it, it's small over here, but you get guys like Nim Vend and Goolsby and Michael Graves, and they're filling pretty big venues over in Germany and, you know, all across... Europe. I'm not sure where all the scenes are. I mean, Germany is definitely ground zero for where a lot of the uh, thriving community is in Europe. But, you know, they still have... It seems Europeans tend to appreciate music and don't forget about music as quickly. They, they appreciate it and they go to see it, they support it. Whereas in the States, I mean... Look at the bullshit that comes out of the out of the U.S. I mean, look at our pop music, which I, every place has got shitty pop music, but damn, only in this country would you find the Kardashians becoming, you know, famous for doing what? Fuck all. You know, nothing. Nothing important. Anyway, I digress. Point being is that I'm like. 
yeah, the point is, is that Europe's scene is just a lot bigger. Whereas, it, it, just, just look, you've got smaller, you've got fests over in Europe that, you know, horror punk fests, not to mention, you know, wave, wave gothic tiefling and stuff like that, that are every year. But you've got, you know, the Hell Knights tour and stuff like that that are going every year. We haven't had, uh... We have not had a horror fest of any size until this upcoming August. We haven't had one in four or five years. Pretty much since Blitzkid broke up. It, that, I mean, they didn't put it on or anything, but that was the last one, the last big one that I remember. And this upcoming August, we got another one coming up. And uh, maybe that's a sign that things are going to pick up in the states. I don't know. We have a, we have enough fucking bands. We have a ton of talented motherfuckers out there. Young bands. Some of the old guard are still kicking around. It's awesome. Just all awesome. We just no one. It, it's really niche over here. I mean, nichier than in, anywhere else. Yet we have so many bands. Anyway, back to day one bands. Back to day one. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna in this on three bands and because we're going to delve a little bit into the psychobilly because you got to because there are some psychobilly bands that really they fit better they you know they might they'll play the with psychobilly bands all day long but they fit a little bit better in the horror punk genre um and the the one that comes to mind right off the top of my head and one of my absolute favorite bands necromantics uh necromantics Kim will take this band and play with anybody. Anybody. Uh, they fit in so well with horror punk, it's ridiculous. Um, all the harmonies are there. But, you know, they, I mean, they started off in the psychobilly scene. They were definitely different in the psychobilly scene, but that's because they had more of a heavy driven, you know, straight balls to the wall punk and kind of metal tinged vibes. But with all that little bits of rockabilly mixed in, and let me get, let me uh, think here. Oh yeah, a lot of that is in horror punk. A lot of that's brought in from all the influences from early on. So Necromantics, that you will. I mean, they've toured with Rob Zombie. They're definitely a band that is easily accessible. They're still on Hellcat Records, which I believe is the guys from Rancid. That's their label. Easily accessible. You can get into them. You can find their stuff. So the Necromantics, get into that. Um, an, another easily accessible band that uh, is definitely firmly psychobilly, but has its its uh, its roots. Tiger Army. I'm not a huge fan of the newest couple Tiger Army records, but uh, up to about Tiger Army three, it, it was. And I'm not. I do like. A little bit of Tiger Army 4 and I don't have Tiger Army 5 but uh, I mean this is it has its roots and especially this London May from Sam Hain uh, played drums on it I got to see him thankfully on this tour because I'm older than dirt and uh, actually I saw them at the Warp Tour on this in 02 yeah 02 02 Warp Tour I saw them uh, with London May touring with them. It was pretty cool. Yeah, Tiger Army, a good one to check out. Definitely leads you down the rabbit hole. Um, and they have strong connections to AFI. Uh, good band to check out. And then finally, um, a band that is definitely horror, definitely uh, accessible, been around forever, definitely an old band. And actually, I'm going to leave off on two. I'm going to leave off on two. Because one is a Demented Argo. The Demented Argo... I mean, Horror are Us, firmly psychobilly. Firmly. And, uh... But they've been around since at least the... Late 80s, 90s. I think late 80s. Either way, they've been around a hell of a long time. Uh... They are a good band to go down that rabbit hole if you like the, the upright bass driven stuff. 
a little more in the psychobilly camp than they are in the horror punk camp. Actually, a lot more in the psychobilly camp than they are in the horror punk camp. Still, though, they are a good one to mention because I know they are beloved by a lot of the more rockabilly and horror, uh, the psychobilly tinged horror punkers. Um, so they're a good one. And then finally, uh, I'm not going to call them smaller because I know they've been around for a long time, but the Stellar Corpses. Because I call them a day one band. They've been around 10, 12 years ish, probably, maybe a, possibly a little bit longer. Um, I know the lead singer is, de he's got his foot, they're a, they're a psychobilly band, but he's got his like one foot planted firmly in horror punk and the other in psychobilly and they have played with tons. They were on Fiend Force Records. They put one album out there. I think it was their second record maybe. Um, and they, they've just got a new EP out or album something they've got a new release out they're picking up even more steam i have a feeling they're a band that will be one of those you can find just about everywhere kind of bands if i'm wrong i'm wrong but they're one to check out um and that's it that is my list of bands that you should check out day one with some ranting in between but uh you know i'll in the description below I will put uh, examples, you know, musical examples of all the bands listed. I will, uh, you know, I'm happy if you guys get into this. I, and I want to ask you a question. What are your day one bands? Did I cover everything? Did I fucking miss shit tons of stuff? Um, yeah. Yeah. Just leave comments, and uh, I'll see you next time on The Midnight Chamber.